What's up everybody? Welcome back. Today is one of your favorite types of videos where we do something a bit dumb. Uh, not because the end result is going to be groundbreaking or even work, but because the process of getting there is fun. So, first question, do you know what this is? Yeah, that's a fan. <laughs> yeah, I bet you all know that. This is the A12 X25 from Noctua and supposedly one of the best performing fans on the market. A little brown, but other than that, uh, it looks kind of cool. But the idea today is, uh, have you ever looked at one of these fans and thought, I wonder how hard it is to make that? Because I have. And actually, if you, if you subscribe to this channel, I'm sure you have too. So that's the idea. We're going to try to make a fan. We're going to use this as our base point. This is going to be the, the performance that we're trying to get close to. I will not say match because, let's be honest, um, a little bit more R&D went into this than went into mine. But we're going to try to use this as our base. We want to make something that moves air has a spinny thing and pushes air through it. And we're gonna to try to use it to cool something or we're just gonna see if it works. So that's the idea. Let's get going. So the first thing I looked at when I got out said fan was what would be uh, the easiest thing to make. And of course the, the frame would be the easiest thing. So that's what I did. This is a frame for a fan. There's really not much to it. If you know the spacing between the holes, which is 105 and that that's a 120 millimeter fan, you can pretty much make a frame. It's Basically a square. Easy. Uh, the part that's a little bit more difficult is the, uh, the the blades, the the disc, the air maneuver, manu manu the air mover device, which is this, and that's what we got here. It's um, similar in size, a uh, little bit different shape. Obviously not as precise to say the least. But this is what we're gonna go with. This is the first attempt. I actually have another one printing now because this one's a little rough. Didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. It's gonna be our sacrificial fan because let's be honest, this thing's gonna end up broken because we got a lot of things to find out. We gotta, we gotta find out if this actually moves air um, and how much rotational speed can a 3D printed fan blade take because the power plant was probably the most tricky thing because this is just design and print, easy. Uh, getting something that spins said blades is the hard part because my first thought was I'll just take a motor out of an existing fan. Duh, that's easy. Well, it's not because unlike other devices out there, a fan was really not meant to come apart. They put it together, you use it, and then when it's obsolete or broken, you just toss and get a new one. So everything's pressed or sealed or glued. So my endeavors into removing a fan motor were, uh, were not successful and you can't really even find them unassembled online so I needed another option and that's where I ended up with this and if you guys know anything about the mini quad hobby or RC's in general you'll recognize this Emacs red bottom as a mini quad motor and well to say the least it's a little bigger and it's quite a bit more powerful this is a 2300 kV motor and we'll be running this fan at about 12 volts. This has the potential to spin at 27,600 RPMs. Obviously that's unloaded. We'll never reach those RPMs when we have a load put on it, but it's gonna be far greater than the 20 or the 2000 of the Noctua fan. And I'm guaranteeing you, it's gonna, the centripetal force generated by this motor is gonna make this fan blade disappear. We're gonna find out because not only are we gonna need to figure out if this spins this in a way that makes air move. We also need to find out how fast we can spin this before it grenades itself. So that should be fun. Also, we need to figure out how we're gonna power this. Um, I could just go get a battery from downstairs if I have any that still work and just use an ESC. Well, I'm gonna use an ESC anyway, but I, I need to find out where to get the voltage from. It's either gonna be a battery, but I think we can f rig something up to plug it into a power supply. So that'll be the first thing. Before we get there though, we need to make this worthy of, to get, I mean, obviously to get it the best possible chance of just not shaking itself to pieces, we need to clean it up because it's really rough right now and we need to balance it because anything that spins, if it's unbalanced, it's gonna vibrate and vibrations cause sadness. To balance it, I jumped into my hobby, RC hobby bin and picked out one of these guys. If you don't know what this is, this is basically a prop balancer. You put your propeller on here for when you're, you know, for your RC plane or mini quad. You set it on this guy and you see how it rotates. The heavier blade will face down, so you take material off. And you want to get to the point that any direction you place the propeller or blades or fan, whatever you know orientation you put it in, it just stays there. To balance it, it's pretty simple. We just take this off here. This little rubber collar just slides off the end. 
Got a spring and a washer, and it basically just slides in like so. And make sure everything's straight and it just sits up top just like that we basically just spin it and we see where it wants to stop and that's gonna tell us which side is heavier as you can see it's not at all balanced here once it settles we'll know where the heavy spots are we can remove some material and basically repeat this until anywhere we place it it's just gonna sit so after messing around for a minute here I did finally get it to balance out for the most part you can actually see where I had to add some foil tape because this thing was so far out of balance that I just couldn't keep taking material off or I would have really no fan left. But the bigger problem is, is when I spin this, you can see how imprecise my printer is at drawing circles. Um, let me just show you here. I don't know if that shows up on the camera, but you can see that's quite wobbly. It's not a circle. So that's going to affect us negatively for sure, but we'll see how much. And hopefully this... Uh, next print will be a little bit better but yeah what are you what are you gonna do let's, let's assemble this bad boy and see if we can get power on it after a little bit of tinkering here we got everything kind of set up how i'm going to run it uh, initially i wanted to run it from a regular fan controller use the signal out for the esc unfortunately the esc doesn't recognize the signal so that's not going to work so we're going to have to use a standard rc hobby controller which is not a big deal it'll, it'll still ask control the rpm i'm getting 12 volt power from this molex connector in the ground and then uh, from the ESC, I'm getting five volts to just a normal spectrum receiver. And then we're going to use the just the regular stick control to control the RPM of the motor. So hopefully we'll be able to fine tune it to uh, a speed that won't explode our fan. And then we'll be able to slowly take it up until, well, the fan grenades itself. And the added benefit of using the spectrum controller is that we can get far enough away that we don't catch any shrapnel in the face. So that took a bit of tweaking. The more precise I try to print, the more obvious it becomes that my printer is not really the most precise thing in the world. Uh, the biggest issue I had was the fan blades kind of rubbing on the shroud because the shroud seems to not be a perfect circle and the fan blades, they're not, you know, the best either. But we got it to all kind of fit together. And I got the motor spinning and I know it's spinning in the right direction. So this little situation is all working. So I am going to control it with my uh, RC remote. So that's going to be our fan controller in a, in a sense. I got it mounted here in my helping hands, hopefully they can hold on. And now it's time to see if it uh, moves air. So the idea, I also put a target on there so we can measure the RPM, so we're just going to get it up to a slow speed and see how fast it is spinning, and then we're just going to just gonna take it up and up and up until uh, kablammy. So here we go. So let's turn that on, turn that on back up a little bit not the quietest this is a used uh, motor so I'm not sure how good it is we are moving air so uh, really mission accomplished Let's see how fast we're spinning I'm getting a reading of 3,000, 2,900, 2,900 RPMs, which is faster. This is the low, ultra low noise, so it only does about 1,200, but 2,000 is what this normally does. We are moving some air, so let's see how fast we can go. I'm going to go, I'll, I'll bring the camera in closer, and I'll go ahead and get out of here, and we're just going to, just going to dial it up until either it flies out of the helping hands, or uh, it explodes. Okay, so I've retreated to a safe spot. I gave the helping hands a little bit more help in the form of some zip ties, and now we're gonna start her up here. So I'm not even to half throttle yet. Almost half throttle. Oh boy. Seems to be holding. Let's measure that RPM.
So right there, it's getting pretty loud. We're sitting just over 5,000 RPMs and we're about half throttle. So now we're gonna go up to half and see if we can make it. Whoa, starting to get some wobbles. So it seems like we might actually have, it might not break, it might get to a point where the oscillations get to a point where it locks itself between the fan and the shroud. So let's get that closer and then we'll take a video of that. Let's see what that looks like. About 5,500 RPMs is where we start to get to some vibration issues, but we're gonna we're gonna keep at it and see if we can get to six grand. No, oh, we're up there now. Stabilizing, Let's see what our RPMs are. Okay, so that run we got to 7,600 RPM and it was, bleh, stability wouldn't, wouldn't be the term that comes to mind, but we're just gonna go for it now. We'll back up a little farther and we're just gonna see if we can get it to explode. Looks like we got it to back off, but it didn't, didn't fail. What's up? So I just wanted to take a time out here because I was just editing this. I didn't see this as I was making the video, but if you look in the background, so I'm gonna show that same footage again, but look in the background because I didn't measure the RPM or, or the wind speed or how much air we were moving or anything like that. But if I, when I was editing, I seen in the background that you can actually see this monitor, which is like that one over there, which is like eight foot away from this fan. When it's full out going, you can see the monitor start to shake by just how much air is being blown at it. I thought that was pretty interesting. So watch that clip again and take a look at the monitor in the background. So that was uh, equal parts terrifying and awesome. Uh, but we, we accomplished what we, we set out to do. We, we set out to make a spinny thing that pushed air and that it did. And we wanted to find out if PLA could withstand the forces uh, of just being in a fan blade. Would it just explode? What would happen? And surprisingly it held together. I did see a max RPM of 7,600. Uh, I don't know what it got to when we just went full out to see if we could break it. But it's weird that it didn't shatter. It just kind of pulled that nut into the fan hub and just kind of melted it into there which I was not expecting. But for the most part, everything is still together, even though it, we, we transferred a lot of plastic from the shroud to the fan blades and vice versa. There's no, there's no cracking. I mean, everything is pretty much how it was. So I think going forward, we're going to make a beefier threat. Well, one, we need to make a shroud that's beefier so it has less tendency to flex. And I think the same for the flam, fan blades. Well, we'll maybe, What's this got, about nine in it? I think that's what we got on this, or somewhere near. Maybe we'll, we'll reduce the amount of fan blades, maybe thicken them up so they don't bend as much when they're printing. Uh, essentially, we just gotta get everything more balanced uh, and more symmetrical, and I think we'll have better results. But, uh, when this thing was going, it was, one, it was loud. Two, it was, uh, it was scary, because I thought it was gonna just <laughs> But three, I mean, it was pushing a lot of air. I mean, you, were, you would go deaf, but, um, it was moving air. I don't know how much, it didn't measure, but when we get a better fan design, a better shroud design, we're definitely gonna measure how much air we're pushing, and then maybe if we can get it to a point where it doesn't wanna shake itself to pieces, we'll, we'll mount it up on something and see how it does. 
But thank you guys for watching. If you guys want to see how this turns out, make sure to stick around for part two. Also, you know, when this is all said and done, I will be posting these STL files on my Thingiverse account for all you guys to download and mess around if you want. If you got any recommendations on how to make a more functional or more, how to get my printer to basically print what I want it to more precisely, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time.